us move on and understand more things now using an example. Regression analysis. You need to arrive at an equation to predict correlation. Here is a case study. Dietitian wants to find out whether there is a relationship between calories consumed versus weight gain. If there exists a relationship, then how can we accurately establish this? That is a question that we have, and this is the pain area which we need to address using regression analysis. Weight versus calories. Let us open that particular file in mini tab and go about doing this. The first step in regression analysis is to look into the relationship between the variables y and x. Weight gain is y. Is it dependent on calories consumed, which is your x? This is a simple linear regression equation. Weight gain is a continuous variable. How much over I divide this, whatever accuracy I represent this, it is still going to make sense for me, doesn't it? My wife's weight is 150 kilograms. Ah, sue me for this, right? <laughs> so I can either represent my wife's weight as 150 kilograms, or I can say 150.1 kilograms, or I can go to another accuracy level, 150.1.6.2 kilograms it's still going to make sense doesn't it calories consumed i can break down the number to whatever accuracy level i wish to and it is still going to make sense for me and that is calories consumed so if the two variables are continuous that is when regression comes into picture the first step is to look into scatter plot and visually try to establish whether there is a linear relationship or not all right because your pearson correlation coefficient doesn't give you the image and remember there can be a higher pearson correlation value even if there is not a straight line linear relationship even if the relationship is curvy linear a curve still it might end up showing you a strong relation hence we first look into the scatter plot. Let us do that. Go to graph scatter plot in mini tab. Let me do that. Here we go. This is the example. I go to graph. I click on scatter plot. I do a simple scatter plot. I click on OK here. I need to enter weight gain in Y and calories consumed in X. I have these values already entered here because I've done this exercise in the past. So otherwise, this is how the screen would appear. You will have to click on this Y variable, select weight gain. Automatically, it will shift. The pointer is going to shift to X variables. Now select calories consumed. Click on select. All right. Click on OK to view the scatter plot. Here is the scatter plot. It shows more or less a linear relationship. The points are a little closer to each other, so it can be a strong positive correlation between weight gain and calories consumed. We want to evaluate this using Pearson correlation coefficient, the small r value. How do we do that? Go to stat, basic statistics, correlation. How do I go back to the worksheet? I simply click on this right show worksheets folder i click on that and go back to this i need to go to stat basic statistics and i need to click on correlation the moment i hover my mouse onto that it's going to show me this right a small pop-up which will explain me quickly about what correlation is all about click on that how since i have done this already these values are selected i remove that this is how it's going to look like when you open for the first time. I select these two, I click on select. It's going to pull in these two values into variables field. There are a lot of methods. You can either use Pearson correlation or SPM and row. I'm selecting Pearson correlation coefficient. This class is limited to few things, right? We are not into core statistics class. This is a Six Sigma session. In the core statistics class, which XLR provides, you will learn about SPM and row. Also in Master Black Belt, to some extent, you learn that. 
All right, I'm just clicking on OK. Here goes the value. Pearson correlation coefficient is 0 0.947. Remember, anything greater than 0 0.8 or 0 0.85 is a strong relationship. So we have a strong relationship here. So that is what it says. Only if I have a strong relationship, I can proceed with regression analysis. How do I do that? Go to stat regression, regression fit, regression model. I'll do that by going back to the worksheet or mini tab, sorry. How do I go back to the worksheet? I just click on this here, right? I need to go to stat regression. I'll go to regression once again in that. I'm going to fit a regression model. So these values would be available here if you already had done this exercise. So since we have not done this yet, click on responses, say weight gain, continuous predictors, calories consumed. Hey, here we have categorical predictors also. If you have attribute data, you can do a logistic regression as well. All right, we'll discuss about logistic regression in black belt, not in green belt. All right, and now we just click on OK. And let us see how the output is going to look like. Hey, here I go. I have an equation now. Weight gain is equal to minus 626 plus 0 0.4202 calories consumed. Wow, I've got a prediction equation. Now, if anyone is going to give me calories consumed, dietitian is simply going to substitute the calories consumed in this equation to get the weight gain. How cool is that? But let us look into the entire analysis. We'll not look into each and every concept of this or each and every component of this. We have degrees of freedom, adjusted uh, sum of squares, adjusted mean square, F value, and P value there, right? So regression, P value is 0 0.000, right? And calories consumed has P value of 0 0.000. So your coefficient and your x variable are, are, are both having a p-value which is less than 0 0.05. Hence, these two variables are significant. They are significant to predict your weight gain. And look at the r-square value which is 89.68%, right? It's greater than 0.8 or 80%. That says that your model is good model. Higher the R squared value, better your model prediction would be. 89% of the variation of Y is explained using this equation. That is what it says, All right? All right, so let's go back to this. Hey, here we go. So we have got the equation. I can substitute calories consumed. From now on, any person says, hey, I have consumed so many calories. I'll say, hey, do you know what? If you continue this lifestyle, then your weight gain would be so much. I'll be able to predict. Now I can claim myself as a dietitian, right? <laughs> All right, let's move on. Check for sufficiency of critical inputs. In this particular equation, if it so happened, assume that Calories consumed was insignificant variable. That means p-value was greater than 0 0.05. That means this x variable will not be used or you cannot use it for predicting your weight gain. And I need to go back and identify a few more inputs, x's, right?